Welcome to Spotlight on Migraine, hosted by the Association of Migraine Disorders. Join us for fresh perspectives by medical experts and advocates as we explore the spectrum of migraine and dig deeper into this complex disease. This episode is brought to you by our generous sponsor, Lundbeck. Dr. Dan Henry and nurse practitioner Ruth Kennedy walk us through the process of getting IV therapy, a treatment method they use to help break a migraine attack that hasn't responded to other therapies. They explain the medications that are used, who it's best for, where to get it, the cost, and more. Lundbeck is a global pharmaceutical company that is committed to improving the lives of people living with brain diseases. Lundbeck is pleased to offer a treatment option for migraine prevention. To learn more, visit LundbeckUS.com. Hello and welcome to Spotlight on Migraine. I'm your host, Molly O'Brien. Today you're going to learn everything you need to know about IV therapy for migraine. I'd like to introduce our guests, Dr. Dan Henry and Ruth Kennedy of the Foothill Family Clinic. Hello and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. First, let's start off with the basic. What is IV therapy? IV therapy is basically exactly that. It's, It's starting an IV line, which is not a big deal with with fluids and everything. And it's used predominantly, uh, where we use it, we use it predominantly for rescue. And these are for patients who have been using their normal oral or injectable rescue meds, and they're just not getting anywhere. Maybe they've got intractable migraine. They've gone two, three, four, five days or more. Uh, with continuous headaches, but it just doesn't knock it out. And so we start an IV and give various medications. Some people call them migraine cocktails. And so we can give them all sorts of different medications through the IVs. And, and one of the one thing is, is a lot of these individuals are very, have been very nauseous. They may have been throwing up. They may be very dehydrated. So the fluids in and of themselves uh, are very useful. So that's kind of the basic overall. So now let's get into the nitty gritty. But we did have a question while we were preparing this podcast. Is IV therapy different from CGRP therapy that also uses an IV? Some of them do. Yeah, it's one of them does. And yes, it's totally different than that. This is, this is used more to break a cycle, to break somebody who's intractable. And this is to get them relief right now. And so we commonly... Um, you know, we kind of have a number of different cocktails that we use. We start off with high dose magnesium in the IV, magnesium sulfate, which is a nerve kind of calming agent and works in and of itself. Um, But then we add pain medication, oftentimes uh, uh, Tordal. We offer different anti-nausea medications with it. And then in some people who are severely intractable, we'll use uh, IV dihydroergotamine or DHE. Can you walk us through kind of what the process looks like, feels like, sounds like, what people can expect if they're looking for this kind of treatment? I'll let Ruth just walk the patient who's on it right now (laughs) in another room. So Um, yeah, so somebody comes in, usually they've called first and are like, I can't get rid of this headache. You know, I've taken my medicine and we kind of talk about options. So number one, I say, did you drive here or do you have somebody to drive you? So then we can figure out, you know, do we want to give medications that can make you tired or not? Um, And then we can, we talk about medicine allergies because I don't want to give you anything you're allergic to. Um, and usually what we're doing is we just, we have to find IV access. So that's usually a vein in your arm. It's just one little poke. It's not as bad as a flu shot. I don't think. (laughs) Um, but then we can kind of get the fluids going and especially in a migraine, when you're having that nausea and vomiting, you're already dehydrated and that's feeding the migraine more. So a lot of people start to feel better almost right away, just because they're like, huh, like, it just, it's so hard to drink enough when you're very nauseated. Um, and most IV medications, they kick in much more quickly than oral medications do. So if you're taking an ibuprofen, you know, that may take 20 minutes, 30 minutes in some cases. And we know with migraines, a certain number of people, their digestion kind of slows down. So you're not absorbing quite as well. 
is when you don't have a migraine. So with the IV, you know you're going to absorb, absorb it. You know it's going to kick in more quickly. Um, most of the medications, I feel like none of them hurt. I, I can kind of taste like a metallic taste with some of them, but overall it's besides the needle poke of putting the IV in and a little fluttery of the fluid kind of going in, um, it really doesn't hurt. It does take a little longer. It's a longer appointment. So you plan on being here in the office for one or two hours. If you have somebody who can drive you, that's great. And we may give you like Benadryl or something because a lot of people who've had a migraine for a few days aren't sleeping well. Um, so it's helpful to maybe be a little sleepy. But if you drive yourself or don't have a driver, I think it's just as effective. We can do nerve, if we have somebody who's really intractable, I mean, they really have stubborn migraine and nothing's working on it, we can give them an IV and do nerve blocks even at the same visit. And we do that quite commonly, actually. And we can give them steroids also in, in addition. I mean, the myriad of anti-nauseas, you know, we use typically either metoclopamide or promethazine or, um, you know, sometimes a Danstronon, uh, Zofran, we can give any of those medications intravenously and they kick in very, typically I tell pe people on the first IV bag, because depending on how dehydrated they are, we may give them either one or two liters. Mm -hmm. So a lot of fluid, but we can give that again about an hour and a half. But I usually tell them that typically by about f half the first bag, they'll start to notice their headaches and their nausea is much, much better. And so that doesn't take very long. That's pretty fast relief, or at least the start of relief, especially if you've been intractable for several days or oh, yeah. weeks. So that makes a big difference. Oh, huge, huge. Yeah, huge. And you told us that the patients that you offer this type of treatment to are intractable. They just can't get rid of migraine. Can you tell us a little bit more about who might be best served by this treatment? And then on the flip side of that, who should not be a candidate for IV therapy? I think the people who are best served by this, if you have a lot of nausea with your migraine or you frequently throw up, IVs are for you. Because once you're throwing up, it doesn't matter how great a pill is, it's, you're not going to absorb it. Um, and then anytime, you know, you've taken your rescue medicine, maybe even three days in a row, and you're just still not getting rid of it, we prefer people to come in sooner than later. You know, the people who come in, they're like, I've had this for two weeks. We're like, oh, you probably should have come in sooner. We'll still, we'll fix it, but it's a little easier earlier. We don't want them to suffer. Yeah. I mean, let's just, face it. We don't, yeah, time. you know, that's a long time. And, and <laughs> yeah. typically if you, if you go two, three days in a row, um, you're probably not going to break it just doing the same thing you've been doing right. for the last few days. Right. And so you need something more. Yeah. And even some people, like you don't have to be throwing up or very, very nauseous. There's some people who just, you know, they've, they've exhausted their meds. And so an IV is a, it's a different thing. We haven't tried yet. You know, it's something other medications they haven't been given. And um, so honestly, almost anybody can. I think the people who aren't served well, um, what do you think? Well, the person who's had it, you know, they've never had an IV, but they've heard mm -hmm. a friend who had an IV and they've had a migraine for three hours. Right. We'll get those calls it's like and, a, and they want to come kill. in for an IV and you say, well, let's start with something else. Right. You know, so, so, but otherwise almost nobody is not a candidate yeah. for IVs. And, and just to give you an example, I mean, we do is, you heard with the last conversation, we do a lot of acute care here, uh, meaning patients who call the same day, but they're just, you know, having a horrible time. And I guess probably the only other rare contraindication is if you had like kidney disease or kidney failure, we probably do it either slower or lower volume. So we take into account any other pre-existing health conditions like that. And pregnancy, you have a whole different you know, because you'll get some severe migrainers in pregnancy and their migraines may be very, very severe. Mm -hmm. And you don't have as many options, but you can do just the fluid for a lot of those patients who are pregnant and throwing up a lot. The fluids add a lot and the, and the nerve blocks add a lot to those people. We can't do some of the medications, but we can do 
uh, a danstronon, certainly we can do metaclopamide both for, for both the migraine and for the severe nausea. And that's mm -hmm. huge. I'm really helpful. It sounds like what you're describing is a really good last ditch effort to get rid of migraine. So it's nice to know that there's a little bit of a catch there when you just can't seem to knock it on your own. Oh, absolutely. So you talked a little bit about how patients can start feeling relief within about 30 minutes or half of an IV bag. Do you have any understanding of what the efficacy is or how many patients actually do respond? at least 90% of people by the time they leave mm -hmm. are probably 75 to 80% improved over when they walked in. Yeah. And that may be underplaying it. It may be better than that, but it's, it's that, if, you know, it's a very, very effective rescue medication or rescue regimen because not just a med because there's lots of different medications we use and the, and the key is you'll find certain people respond much better to one regimen and others respond better to another but you can add these together and find out so really you can um, you can really formulate a plan for a specific patient and individualize it it's not one one size fits all Rarely it is. Oh, it makes things too easy. Not with migraine. Never, with, Never with migraine. Never with migraine. Yeah. <laughs> it would just be too easy that way. But it sounds like most patients get pretty good results. I mean, if you're shooting at 90% and of patients get 75% relief by the end of treatment, that's pretty darn good. So uh, good for us to get that information out there. Now, like you said, most treatments are individual individualized for each patient, but I am wondering if you know of any side effects or if you've seen any side effects or interactions with other migraine medications that could be problematic. Most of the individuals you'll, you know, you, you talk to about what they've taken, you know, in the last day in, and that same day before, you know, in other words, you'd never give, um, if they had taken a triptan, Imitrex, you know, one of these triptans, uh, before, right before they came in, you'd never give them DHE, dihydroergotamine, because that could lead to hypotension and there's a drug interaction there. But most of the other medications that we're using, um, there aren't major drug interactions. Most common side effect we see is drowsiness, and that's why, um, and that's only in patients that, uh, who have a driver and that will give them medication and we actually don't mind if they fall asleep during the IV. In fact, a lot of them will. Yeah. Um, is actually they'll take a nap and that's always a good sign because you know you've, you've pretty much broken them if they're asleep. Sometimes it is a little bit of trial and error um, so I like to talk a lot about possible side effects you know like like Zofran it's a very well tolerated anti-nausea medicine like one or two percent of patients can get constipation with it so I like to you know give people the heads up that that's a possibility but we, we use these medications so much, we're very familiar. But in, in terms of like reactions between medications, most do pretty well. Yeah, you, you know, there's a rare extra pyramidal effect where somebody has a very uncomfortable sensation, but those are, yeah, I mean, they're so rare and there's easy ways to combat them as long as you know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Good to know. So now we'll get down to the really fun part, cost of IV therapy. Is this something that's covered by some insurances? Uh, if not, what are you looking at if this is the kind of treatment that you are seeking out? Number one, it, it is covered by almost all insurances mm -hmm. and most of the insurances love the fact that we do it in the office because we can do it for maybe 25% the cost of what it would be in the ER, maybe yeah. closer to 10 in some ERs. Um, so it, it's very, actually a very cost-effective treatment. So can you explain a little bit about cost if someone doesn't have insurance, maybe throw out a couple numbers for us? Typically, um, if they don't have insurance, maybe $200. Worth it. <laughs> we're in it we're in the ER it might be twelve hundred dollars or more and I feel like even with insurance the like with insurance coverage the price range is usually anywhere from like fully covered to about 200 uh, I'm curious because 
people around the world listen to these kinds of interviews, how can they approach uh, seeking out IV therapy? Do they talk to their doctor? Do they make calls to different clinics? Kind of, how do you go about getting this treatment well, if you haven't done it before? Yeah, you, you always want to start with your own doctor. And if you have a, a, a headache specialist or your, whoever your doctor is that you see for your migraine disease, that's the first place to start. And, and a lot of them aren't, I will tell you, don't do it don't do IV therapy in their own facility, but a lot of them have association with an infusion center or someplace that's, again, more cost effective and, and quicker than going to an ER, you know, um, you know, on a cold run. I mean, we all, some patients will still end up in the ER because it's two o'clock in the morning and things like that. But the majority, vast majority of people can be treated as an outpatient center. Um, that's a lot, um, more affordable uh, and maybe a little more efficient. These are all good things to know for migraine patients out there that they don't have to live with intractable migraine. There are options. There are there options, are. absolutely. So good to know. Um, I do have a couple questions from our audience. Uh, one listener is curious if IV therapy will work for vestibular migraines. Yes, we use it commonly. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Another one of our audience members is curious if they seek out IV therapy and it doesn't work, what could they do next? And I know you don't have this patient, but kind of broadly speaking, if it doesn't work for a patient, then what? If they do IV therapy and they're not doing great at the end of the appointment, uh, we'll commonly do nerve blocks mm -hmm. um, with those people or uh, give them a short course of steroids, prednisone, to break the cycle. There, there are a lot of other rescue things you can do in those individuals. So I'd like to wrap things up here on Spotlight on Migraine, and I'd like to thank our guests, Dr. Dan Henry and Ruth Kennedy, so much for joining us today. It was great to see you all again. Good, good thank to see you. you. So thank you again. We're happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into Spotlight on Migraine. For more information on migraine disease, please visit migrainedisorders.org.